Jot. Oh, this Jot. JWT stands for JSON Web Token. In short, we call it as Jot because it is easier to pronounce. So we'll say Jot from this time or JWT. I will go with both the words. Jot or JWT stands for JSON Web Token, as I mentioned. So we'll talk about why do we need Jot. We'll talk about what is Jot and then we'll focus on how do we implement that in our project. See, the thing is, when you talk about security, of course, we have done a lot of things about security till this point. We were able to log in uh, so that we can access the resource. So what resource I'm talking about? So let's say uh, we have a client here, a happy client, and then we got a server here. And of course, every time you uh, try to access any resource from the server, basically we send a request, of course, but the first request should be for the login. Otherwise, you cannot access the resource. Yes, there are certain resources where you don't re need restrictions, but let's say you've got a resource which is protected, and if you want to access it, you need to log in first. And when you log in, uh, you, of course, for login, you have to provide your credentials. It can be username, password, or anything else. And this goes to the server. Server says, okay, you are an authorized person or, or application and you can access the resource now. So of course you are already happy, you are doing transactions and everything is going well. But then every time you access some other resource, let's say on the application or the server, you have 10 resources. And when you access one resource, you provide the credentials, it works. For the next access, you don't have to provide credentials, right? Because you are logged in already. Then why you have to provide credentials? And that's why we use something called session. So what happens is when a client sends a request to the server and if it is logged in, uh, you maintain a session basically. You have a session ID stored on the server. Let's say the session ID is 102. And then every time client goes to the server, I say, hey, I'm, uh, I'm this and my session ID is 102. And then server knows, okay, this person has logged in earlier. We don't have to ask for username password every time. And that's why if you go to any website, let's say Gmail, I don't remember when was the last time I have logged into Gmail. So on this machine, not this machine, my personal machine, I have Gmail logged in for a, for a very long time. Uh, I mean, not just Gmail, most of the applications, right? And then I can actually use other Google applications, let's say Google Drive or uh, Google Meet, just by that sign-in. So we, uh, we have something called SSO, which is single sign-on, where you log in once and you try to access all the other applications. But yeah, the main point is you don't have to log in multiple times, you just do it once. So to achieve that, we use something called session, okay? So what is wrong with session? It's great, but then there's some drawback. And to understand that, let's go with an example. So let's say I am Navin ready. I am Navin ready. okay? So let's say I go to different uh, offices for training or some consulting work. And then every time I visit a company, maybe the process goes for two weeks or three weeks or a month, okay? And then every day I leave my home, I go to the office, and in between, maybe I want to have a coffee, okay? So what I do is I know uh, for a particular office, there is a coffee store there. Uh, so there's a coffee store here. And then uh, this store name is what? Okay, I made a cube, I don't know why. But let's say this coffee store is Tea Coffee. I know that sounds a good name. But yeah, so we, have, we got a tea coffee shop here. And then I go there, I pay some amount, let's say maybe $5 for a coffee. I know that's a costly one, but let's say I, I pay $5 for coffee and then I get a coffee, right? I'm very happy. So that's a server, that's a client, uh, the transaction has been done. And I was thinking, okay, so I go there every day, right? So for next two weeks or maybe next three weeks, I will be, I will be having my coffee there. So why don't I make a pass, a monthly pass, or maybe uh, I will pay upfront where I will get some discount. I don't have to stand in a queue to order the coffee. I can just show my card and I can say, hey, you know, uh, give me the coffee. And that sounds good, right? You don't have to stand in a queue. You don't have to carry change or you don't have to scan to pay every time. You just pay that once. So we had a deal, okay? So that person there, so let's say the person name is Bob. So let's say Bob is here. And then Bob says, hey, Naveen, you can just pay $50 once and then you can access the coffee. You can you can come here every morning. You can get your coffee and we'll give it to you. So $50, good amount. Uh, so that's for uh, the entire three weeks. I'm very happy I got discount as well. A lot of, lot of benefits, right? And I'm going there, I'm showing my face and then this Bob knows who I am. So he gave me a coffee. But let's say after a few days, I can't see Bob there. Bob has been replaced by some other person, let's say Rohit. Uh, so when I go to coffee shop now and then I, I don't see Bob there and Rohit says, who are you? And that's weird, right? I mean, I have paid for the coffee, but Rohit has no idea who I am. So if you go back to the scenario, instead of Bob knowing my face, we could have done some better thing, right? What if? Uh, what if Bob could have given me an uh, ID? Let's say uh, Bob will maintain a book there. And in that book, uh, it is mentioned that 102 is Naveen. 
and he has already paid $50, right? And then I can carry an ID card with me, which says 102. And every time I go there, I can show the card. And then uh, now Bob or Rohit, doesn't matter who that person is, can see, hey, you know, uh, I can see your uh, name mentioned in the registry. I can just give you the coffee. So it doesn't matter who that person is, I can get my coffee now. So that's one scenario. Let's go for more scenarios. Let's say now uh, I'm not just going to one training, one city. Let's say I travel to multiple cities. And I realize that most of the, the tech space have the same coffee shop, tea, tea coffee shop, okay? And then let's say I was in Mumbai. Now I'm going to, let's say Delhi. And there I want to do the same thing. I'm going to a company, but I want to have a coffee. So I was in Mumbai and now I'm going to Delhi. Same, co same coffee shop. This time I'll make it just a box. And now when I go there, there's a person here, let's say the person name is different. I will not do this again. So let's say there the person name is uh, Mahesh. And I go to Mahesh by saying, hey, you know, uh, I, have a, I have already paid $50 in Mumbai office and now I want to get my coffee. And now Mahesh says, I don't know who you are. And then I will say, hey, you know, don't worry, I got an ID with me. I will show you the ID. And now Mahesh is looking at the registry, the local book in Delhi uh, coffee shop, and then he can't find my name there. The reason is very simple. The book was there in Mumbai, not in Delhi, right? So we got two different uh, offices. Uh, maybe we can have 10 different offices in, in all over the world. And every time I go there, no one knows who I am. So this is failing. So what could have they could have done is, instead of going for a local copy, they could have made a server in between. Uh, and all these offices can share the same server where they can maintain the uh, registry by saying, Navin Reddy already paid uh, $50 and for three weeks he can access the coffee. And now they can do it. So all these different offices can share the same server. And this will solve the problem, right? And I was happy, he was happy, we, everything is done. But sometime this common database between different servers creates some issues, okay? It, also, it may also slow down the stuff. So this is one problem. How do we solve this problem? So in order to solve this problem, let's go for some other approach. Let's say I'm that person, let's go, let's go back to the original scenario. This is the coffee shop, which is tea, coffee, shop. And then there's a Bob here. Initially it was Bob, right? So let's go with Bob. And now let's change the scenario. I'm going to the server or the coffee shop. I said, I will pay you $50. You gave me the access. And then on that day, of course, I got the coffee. But then instead of giving me an ID and they have to, they have to also maintain the registry, right? Instead of that, what Bob is doing now is Bob is giving me a card. Initially also I got the card, but this time a different card. Now this card will have certain different things. Example, uh, first of all, the card will have my name. The card will also have the issue date when the uh, card was issued and when is the expiry. Of course, expiry is important, right? Otherwise, I will enjoy the coffee for the entire, for my entire career or for my entire lifetime. Provided doctor says don't drink coffee. Otherwise, I will enjoy this, right? So name, issue date and expiry, that's what I want from the, uh, that's what I got. So every time I go to the coffee shop, I will take my ID, I will give it, I will show it to them and they will say, okay, uh, the ID looks good and they will give me back, back my ID and then I can access, I can get the coffee. So name, issue date and expiry works here. Now what is not working is, you know, uh, one of my friend, he also goes with me for different trainings or maybe we meet sometime. And then I have given him this idea. Hey, you know what you can do? You can talk to Bob and you can get this card. You don't have to stand in a queue. You don't have to pay every time. You can pay it once and you can get discount as well. And now this guy is very smart. What he did, he looked at my ID or the card and he says, okay, I can simply make a fake copy of it. And then what he's doing is he's basically changing just one thing. Instead of my name, he's using his name, let's say Hirsch. And now Hirsch can access uh, the coffee. So Hirsch can go there. So Hirsch is here. Hirsch take this card and go give it to the coffee shop and then coffee shop give him the coffee. But don't you think this is a fake one? It's not given by Bob. And maybe Hirsch can go to different cities all over the world and use the same card. So how can you stop it? It's very easy. What if the manager gives a sign there? Maybe Bob or a manager or maybe a stamp of that coffee shop, which you can get here. And that stamp, that stamp is important. And if any card which not having stamp, then you know that this is a fake one. Okay, so this is how you can solve this. And this thing which I got is called a token. Okay, so I can carry this token every time. Now question arises, how would you represent this token in the data format? We have different formats. Uh, we can use XML. So in the earlier days, people used to use XML for this token. Now, which transaction I'm talking about? This, the virtual world client and server. So when you got a client, when you got the server, 
when they want to exchange a token, they will exchange a token with XML format. But the problem with XML is it is very bulky. And even if you want to encode it, the output will also be bulky. And that's why we have to go for a smaller format. So we got the alternative there. And the alternative is JSON. Now JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. So you can represent your data in a small format. And also you can encode it to make it become it more smaller. So you can, it is very easy to carry between the client and server. It will be lightweight. And that's where we thought, okay, let's, let's use JSON. And we are building some token and this will be used for web. So in short, this is called JWT, which stands for JSON Web Token. In fact, there's a website called JWT.io or MS, you can go to any of this. Okay, so what is JSON? So JSON stands for JSON Web Token, our open industry standard RFC 7519 method for representing claims. Now what is claim? So this data on this card is claim. So I'm claiming to be Navin ready. I'm claiming that uh, the issue date is this, the expire is this. That's, those are the claim I can uh, transmit between two different parties, the client and server. And the beautiful thing about this is, you can store your data in this format. If you can see, we got a data here, right? Which is called a payload. So whatever the card is, that's a payload. It will have the name, it will have uh, the issuance time. You can also have the expiry time here. So you can see this is the uh, issuance time. I can also add the expiry here, colon, uh, with the same number, but I will just modify something. I will just paste it here. Instead of three, let's say four. Any number, it just doesn't matter. So you can see this time is 18th Jan 2009, 2018 and 7 a.m. hopefully. And this is what? It's not able to interpret that. This is weird. Yeah. So you can see this is 9.47. So we got two and a half hours of session. So this is the issue time. This is the expiry time. That's how you can pass this. Apart from this, you can also send a header. So a header, header will have the algorithm. So to build this uh, token, you can use some algorithms. We have HS, we got RS. Uh, so HS basically is HMAC, RS is basically RSA, uh, we also got ES. Uh, RSA and ES, they are asymmetric cryptography, they, they use public and private key, and HS uses symmetric key. Now if you are not sure what these keys are, I will give you a basic introduction, but to know more you can check out the video in the link, a separate video on data signature and cryptography. Okay. And then you, you specify those things, algorithm and the type, which is, uh, which is dot here, which is JWT. And you will also give a signature. Remember, Bob or the manager will give a signature and you can use that to verify this is valid. But then you don't have to send all this data from client to server or server to client. What you send is this encoded format, a short format, okay? So when you say you're exchanging between client and server, you send this. So that means every time now, you don't have to maintain session. So let's go back here with this original uh, client server. So now every time you want to access a resource, let's say you want to access a resource for students, what you do is you send a request for the students slash students, but then you also send the token. Now how you got the token? When you logged in for the first time, what you received from server to client is JWT, the token. And every time you go to the server, and if you say, hey, I want students, and server says, who are you? You can say, hey, this is my jot. I'm sending it with uh, the, the request. Verify it and you will know who I am. So that's how basically uh, JOT works. Now, uh, when you talk about the signature, basically you can use different algorithms, right? So we have something called cryptography. So what you do is uh, you send a plain text, right? Now, instead of sending a plain text, you can send a cipher text, you encrypt it. And then of course you can use a key there to encrypt and decrypt. Uh, if you use a different key for encryption decryption, that's called asymmetric where you have a private key, public key. But then let's say if you want to achieve data signature, you can use these two keys to achieve data signature as well. Again, how? You can find the link in description. Check that video. It's very important and you will get to know how data signature works. And by doing this, by doing JOT, you're not actually achieving secrecy. What you're achieving is accountability. That means if you see a stamp on a card, you know that is this is valid. Anyone can read the card. Uh, it's not like you are stopping someone from reading this card because you're sending the data on the internet, right? So you're sending the JOT with the login request. Of course, anyone can see that. Uh, you can also encrypt it. You can use HTTPS instead of HTTP. So by default, we are using HTTP here. Uh, you can use HTTPS to secure your token as well. But uh, the main reason for using JWT is not secrecy, it's accountability. But yeah, you can also achieve secrecy as I mentioned. So yeah, that's it about uh, why JOT and what is JOT. How do we implement this? Uh, let's see in the next video.